Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks so much for joining in with us today. We to be opening uh, the summit. Obviously, this year um, things are a little bit different. And so we've been working hard behind the scenes, getting things ready to give you all a preview of the art exhibit. Um, the residents have been enjoying it already for a few days as we put the finishing touches on just uh, probably yesterday. So, but we work with an art committee and we have several resident artists, many of which are gonna get to meet today. And the first person I would like to introduce is Carolyn Avalos. Carolyn, you are a newer artist. Yeah. I think you've been painting how long? Here, I've been painting about three years. About three years. So. But I used to Google, uh, doodle and draw and little things all the time as a child. I used to make my own paper dolls. Wow. So, But I, I didn't consider myself an artist. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're excited that you really have dove into artwork and I understand that a lot of your inspiration comes from animals and the fact that you're able to help maybe save some lives. Yes. Tell me about that. Okay, so uh, all the proceeds from my art goes to help animal charities in Bedford, Virginia, and there are five specifically that my monies go to. And some of my art is also at Goose Creek Gallery. So they handle all that when it's sold through them. They've sold three pieces of art in March, right before we closed down. They still have two. I have about 20 or 30 pieces now wow. at home. Well, tell us a little bit about what, what you paint, maybe what your inspiration is. Uh, do you do mostly animals or do you no. venture into other things? No, animals, people. Um, and my favorite thing to do is abstracts, very large abstracts, either two by four or 36 by 36, which is three feet by three feet. Mm -hmm. Or even I have, I think, a larger one at Goose Creek Gallery and a larger one at my house. And I love doing abstracts. You're so free. You can just feel the motion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you have one of those um, in the exhibit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And who did you bring with you today? This is Olivia. <laughs> I did her early on. I was into cows when I first started painting. Okay. So I thought I'd bring her today since she was one of my first things I ever did. That's terrific. And um, I really love her, her eyes. And tell me about how you maybe have some technique that works for doing for doing that. Do you have any? Oh, okay. Well, I didn't do it on her, okay. but when I do the cats, there's a way that you can do a little glossy effect because okay. cats have very shiny eyes and you can apply a little certain type of white paint over all the colors that you have and it makes it kind of glisten. Okay. But I didn't do it to her. I didn't know about that technique. Okay. Well, good. Well, but the thing I really want to tell everybody about is how much the animals need your help. So sure, <laughs> if you yeah. don't buy art, go help all the charities. Can I mention the different charities? Yeah, please do, because I okay. know there's several that you support. Five. There are okay. two sanctuaries. There's Butterfly Field Farm Sanctuary in Bedford County. Okay. They have farm animals. There's the Bedford Feline Sanctuary for cats. Okay. There's the Bedford Humane Society. There's the Friends of the Bedford County Animal Shelter. And then there's Bedford Cares. And each and every one of these organizations just does amazing work. You wouldn't believe what they do. They, they pull poor little animals and get them to the vet and they pay for that. And the money comes from donations. Okay. And what we can let you know if you're um, listening in today and would like more information about any of those charities, feel free to email me um, and we'll get that information. I'll be able to share that from Carolyn. Thank so. you. But and we I have, have an Instagram page. You have an Instagram page. And it mentions all the charities there too. It's okay. c.avalos.art. Okay, and we have some follow up that we'll be doing. So we'll make sure we share that information. Thank so you. it's really great to find out, you know, with artists, what inspires them. And so it's really nice to hear your love for animals and your desire to help them. And yeah. I think that's a really great um, inspiration for art. And that's yeah. great. That you've been able to put that um, talent to use to support that. I think that's wonderful. Thank so. you. 
Thank you. But thank you so much for joining thank us you. today. I don't know if there's anything thank else you. you wanted to add or not. No. Okay, great. Well, thank <laughs> you so much. You. And our next artist, I have Glennis Shepard with us. And um, Glennis has a lot of talent and has been at the summit three years, which is about how long we've been doing our art uh, exhibit. And she is a former chair of the resident or the uh, resident art committee and um, really has just contributed a lot. So tell me a little bit about maybe how long you've been painting. And I also think you're part of couple of clubs or no, a club or two. I, I belong to the Seven Hills Art Club, okay. which isn't able to do much of anything right now. But, yeah. But yeah, it's it's still an, an entity. Uh, I guess I've been doing art seriously since maybe in the 70s. I've okay. taken some, some drawing classes, taken classes from various uh, colleges like um, community colleges when I lived in Pennsylvania. And um, I've taken classes from Betty Leary in oil. Started with she's oil. terrific. Yes. Yeah, I think she's even taught some her. classes here at yes. the summit. I moved with her to watercolor. Okay. So this painting actually was from um, the Seven Hills Art Club in conjunction with Lynchburg Parks and Rec had what they called an adult art camp. Okay. And there were six different instructors and the idea was to, to learn some new techniques. Okay. So Sherry Pope to, um, taught this, which is water, watercolor and wax. Oh, how so interesting. It, it combines what I know. I usually, I like to do watercolor and watercolor pencils, and I'm, I'm learning more about acrylics. Okay. But this, this um, you first do the painting and then apply wax in certain places and put lighter, where you want you put the wax where you don't want the paint to go and okay build it up in layers so okay. finally uh it this is very oversimplified but you iron the, the um, wax out and you come up with this it looks almost like a batik and it really gives it um i don't know if everyone's watching today can see but it really has some textured look to it which i think on, is really it's interesting it's on rice paper yeah okay and uh it was just a lot of fun to do I, I took at least, there were, out of the six, there were maybe three classes that I wasn't familiar with the techniques okay. they were teaching. Okay. So that's always nice. I, I enjoy learning different things too. Are any of your pieces for sale this year? Or are no, they all, they're all ones you're holding on to, no, so, the, the other, okay. The other picture that I have is um, Zentangle, and it's an apple that okay. has designs within it. Zentangle is basically doodling, but with, with a purpose. Okay. So there are lots of different doodles, and I just filled up my apple with all different shapes and, and sizes. And I understand they've been taking pictures of the, or zooming around the gallery. So yeah. Maybe show that. Well, I know um, during too. during the uh, the breaks while we're switching out our interviewees, um, <laughs> I know Jonathan has footage going, and so um, hopefully people can catch a glimpse of that too. So we have. A really great exhibit out there yeah. and um, and of course you love birds so yes, that was probably yeah, part yeah, of your inspiration yeah. is that a that's, robin in the that's, picture that's or? actually a baltimore oriole but, oh okay i meant to bring the picture over with me but it's i'm gonna say so clearly i don't know a lot about birds yeah. but yeah. but i i did want to say that i'm so glad we finally got to have this show because we were supposed to have it back in april, april. i know and of course we shut down in march 
And it's just a shame that we can't have the public in yeah. to see oh. it because they all always enjoyed friends and family of residents here always enjoyed coming. Yeah, to, we um, definitely will be have a lot to look forward to next year and um, when we're we're post pandemic and uh, having some people come in. So, yes. but um, I don't. Is there anything else you would like to add? No, just that I'm so glad the summit supports art we the do. way it does. I really so learned much, a lot about art and there's so much appreciation here and, and so many our, fantastic artists here. It's just yeah, there's wonderful. There's more than participated this year. I know um, we have more here than mm -hmm. participated. So we'll be gearing up for a, yes. a big show. Hopefully, we'll work on them for next year. hopefully for next year after we're done with the COVID. So, <laughs> yes. but anyways, well, thanks so much for joining us today, Thank Glennis. You, <laughs> and um, we'll be back in just a few minutes to introduce the next artist. my favorite artist Hazel Gray joining us I say that because I have two of Hazel's paintings hanging in my house and happen to be some of my favorite artwork um, but tell me a little bit Hazel about your experience and and even your favorite painting oh, yes well that that painting was from a photograph I took because I love Blue Ridge Mountains and I took that from a, one of those you know uh, uh, pull-offs uh, and uh, painted it from that. And I've always loved that painting. So I didn't start painting until uh, my husband and I uh, retired to Smith Mountain Lake in the 90s. And the uh, art director at Ferrum College was getting ready to retire and she wanted to start art classes for seniors. So I went to some of those, several of them. But um, I think I learned more about art from my friend, Pat Lenahan, who is uh, not no longer with us, but she was a wonderful, wonderful and very established artist in painting all her life. And uh, she invited me to uh, join her on Thursdays and to paint in her studio with her. And we did that for years. We had so much fun. I learned so much from her. So that uh, I'd, I've done more painting in years gone by than I have done recently. I've just done, I've been playing with a few different uh, media out there, mm -hmm. but I haven't really done as much painting as I used to. Well, we um, have, without even thinking, I know at least three or four of your pieces hanging around the summit. <laughs> and I ran into Mary Lucy, who's up on the third floor. Yeah. And I assured her that I would be returning her picture um, of the Blue Ridge Mountains. So we always look forward to all of your uh, paintings. I know we have um, several hanging in the hallway. So as I'm touring folks and, and introducing them to the summit, we're, we're happy to have your artwork displayed and on loan to us so we can show it off on your behalf. <laughs> I have that huge one down that's down in the uh the art room down there that uh, I painted for a specific place in my old house, the one I moved with me, which had 12 foot ceilings in the living room. Mm -hmm. So that when I got here, I what am I going to do with this painting? <laughs> and Gina said, I know what I do with it. We know where we can put it. So, well, that's one of the, uh, the best things I think we did is um, in the hallways, we added the um, picture molding. Right. Um, and even though you're down in the houses, we give you extra space to hang, hang <laughs> artwork. So we're appreciative oh, of that. Nice. And so grateful for the love of art that we do have and, and residents like you that bring a lot to, 
to nice. the table. So how many pieces do you have um, displayed this year? Do you know? I think there's five. Five? Yes. Okay. Yep. And tell me, um, as far as what you paint, it's primarily what medium? Or well, is it I several? prefer to, to paint in oil, uh, okay. but when you have a limited amount of space, uh, the fumes from the oil are really not very good. So mm -hmm. I have been doing more acrylic and then I, I, I painted this, uh, started this interesting uh, technique, which is alcohol ink on UPO paper, which is kind of interesting. There's one piece out there, okay. which is just, just um, really um, shiny, thick, heavy paper that doesn't absorb anything. And the alcohol ink makes its own patterns on it. It's oh, really cool. fun. Yeah, you don't have to do anything fun. except blow on it once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Well, is there anything else you'd like to add or share with everyone Not today? at all. I just appreciate your and your appreciation. And uh, hope we have another bigger show next year. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Yeah. So getting through the uh, pandemic, I was saying the post pandemic. So post -pandemic. you see me with my mask here every time right. I'm moving around, we make sure we put it on. So right, right. <laughs> we'll hopefully not have those next year at the art exhibit. So, but thank you so much for joining thank us. You. And we'll be thank back in just much. another minute introducing one of our other artists. So thank you. Right. And I'd love to introduce Dana Thayer. And he has a pretty interesting story. Um, you're a bit of an artist yourself, but the love of your life, your wife, Carolyn, is, um, has incredible work. And when you moved into the summit, you actually loaned me one of her paintings. So if you come by my office, you'll get to see <laughs> one of um, Carolyn's work. So, But I know you have a, a good story you wanted to share, maybe a little bit about um, your art and what brought you and Carolyn together and tell me a little bit well, about it. Uh, we're both artists but you know we had good art uh, courses in high school. Uh, she was in the Alexandria, Virginia and I was in New Hampshire. Okay. Uh, that's where we both ended up at Pratt Institute in Brooklyn and she was going to study uh, uh, commercial art advertising, you know, advertising design, mm -hmm. and I was going to study pretty much the same thing. But while I was there, I heard about something called industrial design. And basically what that is, is product design. Okay. It's everything an architect doesn't do, uh, automobiles, home pepper shakers, you know, appliances and so forth. Anyway, Carolyn uh, gave up a, a full paid scholarship to John Hopkins Medical School by act of Congress to go to Pratt. Wow. She didn't want to do uh, medical illustrating. She wanted to get into advertising. Hmm. So that's how that happened. Uh, we met there. We went through our freshman year together. Uh, we never dated. We were just friends. And something uh, about um, bonding over laundry, right? Yeah. Well, <laughs> Tell me about I that. Sit, I used to sit up in my dormitory and look down. There's Carol sitting all by herself. <laughs> in the park waiting for her uh, Marine Corps veteran <laughs> date to come. And of course I was pained out there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we never dated and uh, she did, uh, I had a girlfriend in Boston who was coming down for a weekend. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, so she put her up for the weekend and also did my laundry. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I went away and service overseas for a couple of years. Uh, in those days, some of the girls' sons decided to write the veterans for the GIs. And so she began to write me a letter and I answered back. And that went on for about three years. I ended up back in the States. Looked her up and she was working in Washington at the time. Looked her up. We had a date that never ended. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> three months later, we were we were married. We were married for sixty three years. Yeah. And tell me about this. This well, is that, something that that is the when we went to Pratt, which is in Dan Bedford Stuyvesant in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and we had a fifth floor walk up apartment, and we had two children. At the time. Okay. So. Uh, I did that for our second anniversary, or third anniversary. Very good. Yeah. And I remember, <laughs> um, I remember when I had met um, Carolyn and was talking about her art. Um, she told me she never sold paintings no, or no. did any exhibits or anything She's like never that. Never shown. The only no. place time she's shown publicly has been here at the summit. Has been here at the summit, yeah. and we're sorry she's not here with us yeah. to see that, but. <laughs> I do know um, every year her paintings really, yeah. um, really bring a lot of life to the show, and we're always happy to um, display that work One in her honor. Side story is why I'm holding this picture is uh, she was engaged to a, well, a pretty prominent family in Washington, and he was going to the Citadel, and he was six foot five. And I'm wondering how I, and I'm sitting over in the Philippines wondering how I could get this girl, get a date with her. So I took the leave and went to Hong Kong. When I was in Hong Kong, I went over to the Peninsula Hotel and went to one of those fine Chinese shops and bought her a pair of Chinese pajamas <laughs> and had them sent to her. She probably wondered what the devil is. <laughs> what <laughs> what did he have on? in mind? <laughs> well, this picture is she's wearing the top. Of those two cameras. <laughs> oh wow, that's, that's, that's beautiful. beautiful. And this is many, many years later. Yeah. Uh, but like I say, uh, she did. She worked for the uh, uh, Woodruff Law Firm in Washington. She uh, worked for Shilton Corporation in uh, Manhattan. She had an office that overlooked the skating rink at Rockefeller Center. And she did very well. She eventually ended up working for the uh, Navy Department and decided to send to Maryland, uh, illustrating undersea life. Okay, wow. Yeah. Now, my art career was basically three dimensional. I uh, worked for industrial designers and then uh, I kind of leaned towards architectural type uh, work and got into trade show exhibits and commercial interiors. And uh, I did that for the rest of my professional life. I uh, started a company here in Lynchburg about 48 years ago, and we did very well, and the company is still going. Good. So, well, it's certainly a different, <laughs> a different uh, take or a different type of art, so it's really interesting yeah. to hear about different different kinds and learn about that. Yeah. So uh, thank you for yeah. sharing. So. But um, I think we have at least one other um, artist that we're going to be introducing, so we'll be back in just a quick minute.
last but not least, we have Melinda Dellert joining us. And Melinda has been working with our art committee since its inception. Yeah, and really helped us um, organize our uh, our very first art show and um, and everyone since then. So, and I know that you have a lot of different talents, but you've brought a couple of things you wanted to talk to us today about maybe um, what you're into right now, or maybe your inspiration. So we'd love to hear from you about that. Thank you, Brenda. Uh, it's been a joy to work with the art committee and to uh, participate in art shows. I am one that as a child had a box of eight crayons and I learned to draw very early on and loved drawing. Uh, as you said, I do have other interests, uh, music being the principal one. So uh, as a young person growing up, uh, the drawing helped me even avoid dissecting a frog in biology because <laughs> my professor there was allowed me to draw the different stages of a, a flower, the different parts of the flower, and therefore I avoided that frog dissecting that. Through the years, as I began my family, uh, I was at one time participating in uh, a uh, one of the art draw me things that you see the little ad in the magazines you send her name in and I, I worked with the school out of Westport, Connecticut for about a year and a half, worked in oils at that time. Uh, life tended to get in the way though we're raising family, working full time. Uh, you have plenty to do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my former mother-in-law became ill so she came into the home and I put the art aside. Um, I didn't pick it up again, I must say, until 70 years later when I came to the summit. And I had the opportunity to work with a local artist, Betty Leary, who's a delight to work with. And I had always wanted to experiment with watercolor. I had never done that, and I knew the technique was quite different. So I've taken now uh, three classes with Betty and have thoroughly enjoyed the interaction in the class setting with the instructor at hand to ask the questions and to listen to the other artists who really are much more accomplished than I. I feel as though I'm a novice in the field. And one thing I have learned since coming and becoming a part of the art show and a part of the summit is how much highly developed talent we have here among our people. Um, I'm privileged to be a part of it. One thing I have learned as I have attempted to pick up the brushes and the paints again is that art is a very disciplined field. And the reason I haven't shown any of the, my sketches thus far is that I have a problem. And I'm going to show you now these little sketches. You may notice they're, they all have a one theme in common. They're unfinished. <laughs> so I would say to anyone who really loves the field of art, uh, media art, any discipline in the arts. You have a heart for it, you have a gift for it, but you also must pursue it. And one of the things that reminds me, um, you have framed maybe last year or two years ago, some of your needlepoint. Yes. And how many years did it take <laughs> you to finish that? Remind me. Well, as I said, I have a, a problem with discipline. I began that project when I was in my 40s and I came to the summit 20 years, no, 30 years later, and I still had one of the three objects to complete. We began the craft group here, and as I walked in the door, I said, well, this is my 30-year project. Please help me complete it. <laughs> so um, you must have joy in what you do as well. Re realize your limitations. Don't ever 
don't ever neglect the gifts you're given. I think those are really great, great words to um, <laughs> close on because I think that's something that can speak to so many different people so many different and um, not just in art, but many things in life. So mm -hmm. yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. But we um, want to just thank everyone for taking the time to join us today. And um, we do hope you enjoyed the session. Um, it is something that has been recorded. And so we will be able to send this out so you can share with friends and family. And for all the residents here, we know that you are going to be enjoying the exhibit um, through all through October. So we're happy to have that up. And um, we do thank you again for joining in and, and be on the lookout for us um, as we come into next year. We'll be planning something great when we have the opportunity to do a little bit more. Um, but certainly we have a lot of great artists here, um, several you didn't meet today, um, but we do hope that um, you've enjoyed the time with us and, and having a chat with some of the artists. So thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you around. Thank you.